Yo, Muso here. Let's continue this motion graph talk. Uh, this video I'm going to cover velocity time graphs. Depending on how long it takes, I might just get right into acceleration time graphs as well because they're really not too difficult. But the emphasis on this video, the majority of it, will be velocity time graphs. So let's do this. We're going to put velocity on the y-axis. Okay, V. And I can put my variable there. I'm going to put my units there. What are my units for velocity? Yep, meter per second. And then time down here is still seconds. It's still the independent variable, hence being on the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do a similar thing to the last one, toss a few lines on here and try to make sure we understand how to interpret it. So I'll start off with a nice basic one, uh, and we're going to have this guy right here. And what does this represent? Now, just is the case with all graphs. First things first, identify what the heck is slope. And remember, slope is rise over run which is change in y over change in x, which in physics is the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable, which is going to be change in velocity over change in time. Hmm. What is change in velocity over change in time going to equal? I think I remember that one. Yep. Acceleration. A velocity time graph, the slope is indeed representing acceleration. Cool. But before I even start talking about what is the slope of this graph, there's another thing that we need to look at for velocity time graphs. And, and this is the case for a lot of graphs. So uh, it's always slope. And in the last video, I told you the other one you want to look at is area. We didn't discuss the area of a displacement time graph too much because it doesn't really mean much in terms of physics. But velocity time graph, it does. So the area under this slope means something. And so you'll, whenever, every time you take the area, you always take the area underneath the slope itself. Okay. So I'm talking about this whole region here. And again, I'm not putting numbers in, so it might be difficult to quantify this. But that whole region here is the area I'm talking about. So I don't worry about this area up here or anything below the axes here. It's always going to be from the slope to the axis. So now if that slope drops into the negative region, it'll be from that slope above. It's between the slope and the axis always. And I'll give an example for that shortly. So what does the area of this graph represent? Well, how do I find the area of anything? Well, let's look at my basic geometry here. In this example here, I look at this shape, and this shape looks like a, yep, triangle. And so in this example, the area is one half of my base times my height. Well, what is my base actually? I'm not going to write B times H. That's math. That's geometry. They use weird letters. I'm going to use real physical stuff. What is this? Time. Well, look at one half of time times height velocity. One half of TV. Huh, that's weird, right? This might not be very clear to you, what I'm showing you. So I'm going to kind of show you what I'm trying to show you and then connect the two together. And really what I needed to understand is the area underneath the velocity time graph is indeed displacement. What? Yes. Think about it. Average velocity is change in distance over time. If I were to isolate displacement, it'd be displacement is average velocity times time. T times V or V times T, but you know, I can switch it around. It's math for you. So... This actually represents the total displacement. Let's say, well, where's that one half coming from? Well, the only reason one half is there is because it's a triangle. I'll give you an example where it's not a triangle, and you can understand why that one half is needed. But for now, just recognize the area of a velocity time graph is indeed displacement. And a few things to add to you. If my area is in the positive region of the graph, then I have positive displacement. This means that this object is moving further away from the zero position. Cool. If my area is in the negative region of the graph, then I have negative displacement, which means that, that during that period of time, they were headed in the negative direction. If you have an overall positive net area, then you've moved further away from the starting position. If you have an overall negative net area, then you've moved to the left or in the backwards uh, of the starting position. And I will break that down in an example video shortly probably the next video will be a series of examples where i actually use numbers uh for now i just want that concept in there okay so area is displacement slope is uh acceleration so in this example what do i know i know that i have a constant slope which means i have a constant acceleration i also know that that acceleration is positive because my slope is positive if i have a constant acceleration that means my velocity is indeed increasing well, as long as I started off in the positive, or finished in the positive sense, and I did. If I was over here in this portion of the graph, I could have been uh, decreasing momentarily. So, velocity is increasing. 
Cool. That's really the basics. Let's go through a few other examples just so we can make sure we can see through the difficulties. And what I'm just going to do is kind of expand on this already existing graph. I'm going to leave what I have there and just add a little bit more to it. I'm going to show a scenario in which, well, I'm just going to draw it. I won't narrate it yet. I'm going to add this. And if you're doing this at home, you might want to just do this as a whole new example. Don't add to the already existing example because it might be kind of confusing. All right. What do we got here? Let's break it down here. Beginning, same thing here. We still have that positive, positive constant acceleration. What's true about my slope during this pe period right here? Yep. A is zero. No slope. What's true about the slope here? Constant and negative. So A is negative. And I should do the parentheses thing here. It might, might help separate my symbols. Not only that, I can also kind of compare the magnitude of this slope to this slope. Whilst this is negative, it's also steeper. So I have a larger magnitude of acceleration and it's in the negative direction than I did earlier on where it was a relatively moderate magnitude of acceleration and it was positive. Remember the area underneath the slope is also important. So I wanted to show you this geometry here. Perhaps you can see that middle region. I'm going to pick a different color here so it pops out a little bit more. Perhaps you can see this middle region is best shown as a rectangle or a square. And then, I don't know, I think that this is a pretty clear triangle right in here. Now remember, I go up to the axes. This is all positive displacement. And then we've got this last bit. I might as well change the color. I don't want any of you all to get upset with me if I don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and say this here, this last segment. And I stop where the line stops. So I'm not going to just fill this in infinitely. That's kind of silly. Let me explain you what we've got going on here. Here we go. We've got an object that starts off with zero velocity. It's going to experience a positive acceleration. It's going to get further away from its starting position. So it's going to increase positive displacement. It's then going to travel during this segment with a constant velocity because there's no acceleration. No acceleration doesn't mean no speed. In fact, here we've got a pretty high speed. Whatever this number represents, a pretty high speed. So it's still moving forward, uh, but now it's moving forward constantly. So this whole area is still positive displacement. So perhaps it started off slow. I don't know. It was all like slow. And then it's increasing, increasing, increasing speed. And then it's nice constant speed, that, high, that last maximum speed. And then at this spot, what starts to happen to it? It starts to experience negative acceleration. But remember, at this spot, it was already moving in the positive direction. It has a high positive velocity. It's experiencing a negative velocity. So whilst it will continue to move forward, it's going to begin to slow down. So during this next segment, it's increasing in displacement. So it's still positive area, positive displacement, or positive region of the graph. But it's slowing down until we get back to what is this value of velocity? Back to the origin. So right here, we have zero velocity. I might as well put that in there, right? Here we have v is zero. Here we have v is zero. So this whole time we had some positive velocity and then it was slowing down, slowing down. Now it's back to the beginning of its original velocity, but still far away. You know, it traveled during that whole time. Then it starts to continue to experience that negative acceleration. So now that it's stopped, it's going to actually start to head back toward where it came from during this region. Hence, uh, this here is negative displacement. It's actually going backwards. Okay, so this whole time it was going forward and this time it's going backward. Now, if we were to do some math here, if I were to take all of the positive region and then add it or subtract the negative region from it, if my final value remains positive, then the object finished at a location positive from where it began. If the overall net value is negative, that means the object finished behind where it began. You can probably tell, and I'm not quantifying it, but you can probably tell that there is more area here than there is right here. So it still is going to finish someplace further away from where it started. Pretty clear, right? I don't know. I think it's pretty clear. I hope it's pretty clear. I'm going to give you one more quick example, and then we're going to get into acceleration time graphs. 
I'm also looking at the time here. And I don't know. I'm already at like 10 some odd minutes. I think I'm going to break after this one and then just do the acceleration time graph as its own separate video. I think that makes the most sense. So let's give one last quick example. Uh, we haven't seen a curve yet, so that's just what I want to drop down here is what a curve looks like. And, you know, as the case, which will be the in all of physics throughout the whole year, really, in all, all of these video lessons, there's no way I can give you every single example. You can't just sit here and memorize every possible example and then just, you know, again, just memorize the answers. You have to actually think this stuff through. So, you know, I'm not going through every possible example for a reason. Uh, but let's say we have some of this curve. All right, cool. So what's happening? What does this mean? Well, let's think about it again. What does the slope of a velocity time graph represent? Well, what is change in V over change in T? Yep, it's acceleration. So my slope is changing. So I have a changing acceleration. So here uh, we are talking non-constant. This is rare in uh, entry-level physics classes, high school physics classes. So mathematically, we won't have to analyze this, but graphically, we should be able to interpret this. We do know that its acceleration is non-constant. In fact, its acceleration is going from a low value of acceleration to a just remember to do that tangent line thing, tangent line thing, tangent line thing. We have a very high final acceleration. So at this point in time, it's 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 got a great acceleration. That means it's going to increase in velocity uh, more per given second here than it did down here. And that kind of should make sense. So think about it. One, two, three, four, maybe five seconds later, its velocity only went one notch. But if I were to do five more seconds, one, two, three, four, five here, its velocity went two or three notches. And this spot right here, this velocity is going a significant increase. So we're going to get more and more and more. We're really picking up uh, a whole lot of speed here. And then again, we can take a look at that area under the graph. And this is where mathematically it's going to be quite improbable to do uh, without some understanding of calculus. So we're not going to do that to you. But recognize that um, if I were to take just a given segment here, uh, this given uh, few seconds here compared to the next few seconds, uh, we're covering more and more displacement throughout this time. So if I were to break this down, into, uh, let's say two second intervals. So... That looks like two seconds, that's two seconds, that's two seconds, two seconds, and then two seconds, and then two seconds, right? Those um, columns, sorry, I like to make noises. Uh, you can see here during this, I don't know, just for comparison's sake, I'll just say segment A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. I know my alphabet. Yep, I have a couple young boys at home, and we've been practicing the alphabet over the last couple years actually my oldest is turning three soon in any event uh here we go we've got um in segment a very little displacement because it wasn't going very fast by the end of segment a and then segment d we start to get a decent amount of displacement and then during segment g those last two seconds it covered a great amount of distance in the same period of time as the prior two seconds that's because it's going faster and faster and faster and faster because it's got a increasing acceleration <sighs> okay velocity time graphs i hope you got it remember Recap, slope is acceleration, area is displacement. Cool. Thank you.